Hi, I'm Rebecca and welcome to the Korea Beer Knitting Podcast. Hello and welcome. My name is Rebecca. I'm a knitter and knitwear designer based in Edinburgh in Scotland and this is a vlog or a podcast all about knitting, what I'm currently knitting on, what I've been knitting on and what I would like to cast on in the not too distant future. And today I have so much. I'm getting better. It was four weeks between the last episode of the one before. It's been three weeks since the one before this. I'm still not quite back to my two week schedule. Um, but there's so much to share today. I have a pattern release, which is exciting. Um, four finished objects, which is an obscene amount of knitting. Uh, an old whip that has come back and two brand new cast-ons. Maybe three brand new cast-ons? I can't remember where it was last time. Um, and a little bit of yarn acquisition. So yeah, hopefully I can keep this concise, but we will see. Um, and whatever you're up to, if you are off for Thanksgiving and relaxing, I hope I can keep you company. If you are not off, if you're just living life like the rest of us, just <laughs> grinding, <laughs> I hope I can keep you company too. Um, so let me just jump straight in with, I guess what I'm wearing, which is also the pattern release. So this is my Daft Day cardigan. I'm gonna, I'll put some pictures up as well. I'll give you a little, a little sneak peek. Do, 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 do. So this, oh, I'm, I've admitted that in the winter I have to sit at the window chair, but it spins. So I'm just gonna lose control of everything. So um, I have two patterns, let me find the other one. I'm going live today. One of them is the Dafties cardigan and one of them is the Dafties shawl. Both of these are charity release patterns. I did a charity release for the first time last year and I was really pleased to be able to donate so much money and so um, I'm doing the same this year and I'd like to be able to continue doing that until I stop designing. Um, all of the proceeds from either of the sale of these patterns until the end of 2023, so right until the end of December, are going to the Fistula Foundation. Fistula Foundation is an incredible organisation um, who carry out medical operations for women in areas where they might not have access to the care they need um, and for around about $600 they can repair um, a fistula which uh, otherwise basically just deteriorates life quality for these women. Um, they are shamed and shunned and it impacts every single second every single part of their day. For just $600 they can carry on operation which will change that. So it's for me a really high, when I think about a, pa a charity that I want to support for this, um, I wanted something that I know that the knitting community is largely women and I wanted to do something with women's health. Um, somewhere where you could really see the impact of the money that you're donating. And the Fistula Foundation is a charity I lose, lose last year and I'm really excited to support them again. I think there are other atrocities happening in the world right now which desperately need funding and part of me was torn as to whether or not I should switch and donate it somewhere else. I decided to stick with this organisation. I think the reasons behind it still exist and the women that are suffering that need the operations are still suffering and so I decided to stick with it. Um, there'll be a link down below if you want to click through to their website and see anything else about them. They have some really good really good ratings around how they use the funds and how how such a high portion of the funds goes to the work they do rather than just overheads, which is something that's really important to me. So 100% of the proceeds will go to there. I'm also going to be matching up to £5,000 worth of sales. Um, designing patterns is supplementary to my day job and so the income from designing patterns is supplementary to my income um, which means that I get to I have a bit more flexibility with giving some money back and that's something I'd really like to do this year. I'd like to be able to donate an overall total of a of £10,000 which would mean £5,000 of tails and £5,000 match. Anything above that would be absolutely fantastic so if you buy any of these patterns I will be matching it and it will effectively double your donation. Um, both patterns, I'm going to get into the patterns in a second but I'm trying to make sure I get the admin part out. Um, both patterns are listed at five pounds um, for the whole month of December. So the shawl and the cardigan. Um, at the end of December, when they go back into just my regular pattern library, the cardigan will go up to seven pounds, which is which will align it with the rest of my garment patterns. So if you're interested in this, it is also a quite, sorry, funny hiccups. It's quite a significant um, cost saving to what the pattern will be in the future. I think that is everything about the donation side of things. 
Let me get into the pattern. So um, it is a bottom up striped cardigan. It has a drop shoulder and it's all worked in this kind of this like slip stitch pattern, which you can see gives really interesting stitch definition. Um, it's got a round neck, which is high enough to wear with like a t-shirt underneath, which I love. Slightly cropped body um, and yeah, really easy fit. It's got quite a lot of positive ease. It recommends between 10 and 20 centimetres, but it has a more fitted sleeve, which is a new to me like shape. I usually have, if it's got positive ease on the body, it's got positive ease on the sleeves, um, but this one's like more fitted on the sleeve, which I really like. This sample is my second sample, and this one was sample knit for me by the lovely Alex, um, who is not tired on Instagram. It is knit in Issachar Jensen, and it is lovely. It's so, so nice. I have so much of this yarn left over. I also accidentally sent Alex a navy instead of black the first time, so I have a whole sweater quantity of navy as well. Um, and this yarn is beautiful. I was, I'd never worked with it, so I'm always a bit nervous to send it to a sample knitter, because I don't know what it's gonna be like. Um, but it is really nice, and I have worn it a lot in the past two weeks since it arrived. I wore it to work a few times um, and it is wearing really well. So would recommend this yarn. It also went way further. I think the whole overall meterage for this pattern in this yarn was 900 meters for size four, which is way less than the pattern recommends. So this yarn obviously goes far. So yeah, I got these really, really cute buttons from Etsy. They're plastic, um, which I quite like because it means they don't pull and it also, oh, I'm not gonna, the buttonholes are super dainty and neat and my buttons are chunky. So I basically just, they are functioning, but I'm not gonna unbutton it because the hole is too small. <laughs> Actually, the buttons are too big. The hole is to pass out. Um, this feels like my chic Parisian version. I've got my cute little bow earrings on, which felt like relevant. I probably should have like a red lip and my hair doing something better than whatever it's doing today. Um, but I love this one. I feel, yeah, chic and cute. And yeah, everyone, my mum is obsessed with it. I had a few comments being like, it really reminds me of Chanel. And I can see that. Um, that was the vibe I was going for. <laughs> so let me talk about my second sample. Ultimately, this pattern was designed as an advent pattern. Um, I've got a couple of advents and I never know what to do with advents. And you spend quite a lot, especially a hand dyed advent is quite expensive. And the thought of not making something that I want to wear, like stresses me out. So I got last year's Sadvent, which is a 16 mini skein advent from Nervous Fibre. And it sat around for ages until I started working this one up. And this is it, I will put it on later. Um, but this is the same one in minis. So what I've done is hold the minis double. I just hand wound the minis. Um, with a scale until I got to 10, it was a 20 gram mini, so I hand wound a ball until it was 10 grams and then I held two strands double. I always worry that's going to like detract from the variegation, but I don't think it has at all. I think this, what, this sort of blue and yellow one is quite heavily variegated and holding two strands together has not like taken away from that at all. Um, I held this one with one strand, so that was held double and I held it with one strand of Philcolana Peruvian Highland Wool as the main colour. And I used it for the cuff and the hem and the button bands. Um, I, for size three, used 14 minis. And some of them I used almost completely and some of them I still got a little bit left of. What I've done in the pattern listing is all the testers have submitted the, the grams used per stripe for the body and for the sleeve. And then I have a total number of stripes based on gauge for the sizes. And so it says, for sizes, for sizes like one to five, I'm pulling, check these numbers, I'm making them up. For sizes one to five, a body stripe weighs 10 grams, a sleeve stripe weighs five grams, and there are 18 stripes in the sleeve and uh, 20, not even that, 90, like this has got 19 stripes in the body. And so that way you can calculate where your stripes are gonna be, how many stripes you need, and then how much yardage you need for them not all sizes will be able to get the cardigan out of, a, out of an advent calendar. Um, for example, I think sizes eight to 10 have 26 body stripes and the body stripes are like 15 grams. So you'd need to have like at least 26 minis, I think, to do the full stripes and to get them on the sleeve. Um, but you could always supplement an advent calendar with a few extra minis. Um, and a lot of the testers built, like they didn't necessarily use an advent, they just built it from what they had in stash. Um, like random mini skeins. There are also, oh, there have been so many cool ones. There's a complete fade. Um, 
there's one that uses two advents together and it's just completely like it's a two rainbow advents and just completely use that one with a contrast color for the head the button bands and the cuffs but otherwise it's completely faded so no stripe and that one is incredible so lots of information there i hope it is helpful if you do have questions about how to use an advent do let me know it's work bottom up which i know some people don't love but what's really helpful for this is firstly it makes it easier to stay on top of your stripes if you're knitting daily with an advent um, and secondly you can the body stripe is like the longest your stripe's going to be so you can weigh it and see okay i know for my side exactly how much of this yarn i'm using for my body stripe and that will help you calculate the rest of your yard edge um, because even with the testers they were super varied some of them used some said that they use like 12 grams for a stripe and some said they use 8 grams for a stripe of the same size or the same weight yarn so yeah i've given estimates but it's definitely worth calculating yourself um, so those are the two cardigans and then thirdly I've got a shawl. I'm not really a shawl knitter but again I wanted to make something that people who wanted to participate in the charity release felt like they could take part in and I know a lot of people like to knit a shawl for advent and so I designed the shawl pattern using the same stitch pattern as the cardigan. I've shown this one before um, and this one is four ply so you will 1000% be able to get this out of a full advent my like number one stripe uses half of a gram and the biggest stripe uses seven grams so you could 100% do that it would be bigger you could do multiple stripes you could leave off the main color and just do a fade like there are so many options with this one um and yeah it's just worked uh, a triangle it's worked from here out you have to forgive me this is like my second ever garter tab and it is a little bit questionable but i can promise the instructions are right even if my knitting is a bit wonky um, it's got a spine down the middle and then it's finished up with um, this one just has a rib border which I really love but there have also been some really nice modifications in the test knit someone did a beautiful like scalloped lace border which is stunning um, so I've been learning how to wear a shawl <laughs> uh, which has been fun I like I say I'm not really a shawl wearer oh that sounds really bright um, but I learned how to like tuck this under and yeah I like it a lot I am gifting this one because someone, my mother, commented on how much she liked it. So she will be getting this one. Um, but I think this is the pattern I'll be making my advent, nothing out of my advent calendar. So I will have another one. Um, so yeah, that is everything. Gosh, that sun is just coming in right now. That is everything about the patterns. They're on Etsy and they're on Ravelry. Um, if you want to gift one of them, that would be a lovely thing to do as well. Uh, if, you, if you're thinking, I'm not really going to make it, but I'd like to you know, offer something towards the charity pot. Um, I'll also keep updating as to how much we've raised. And yeah, I just, um, I'm really grateful to be able to do this. It, it's, it feels good. <laughs> um, and it's always nice to see how much the knitting community like rallies around these things. And it's been really fun to test knit it. And I truly love my samples. They're two of my most worn garments recently, which I'm surprised because I wouldn't have thought myself to be someone who would wear a rainbow cardigan as much as I do. Um, but this one is like my fancy chic lady and this is like my granola girl climb a mountain with a baseball cap on. There's just two personalities, I love it. So that's everything for my release. I think I'll definitely have forgotten something but I'll include it all down below. And if you're not, um, if you want support but you can purchase the pattern, you can click the Ravelry, add it to your queue, add it to your favorites, all those things, boost it in like the algorithm. Oh, and I should have said daft days, I've mentioned before, but daft days is an old Scots term used for the days between Christmas and New Year. Um, daft because they were very jolly and full of family and socialising and fun and games. And I thought that was a really nice um, way to, I don't know, that was a really nice name for a, a pattern inspired by an advent calendar. So yes, shall we move on to my other three finished objects? So. I will put these on to show you I think. Um, my first one was so close to being, I actually forgot it was a finished object because it was so close to being done last time I filmed. Um, it is my Stockholm sweater. You can tell how much it's been worn um, on the back of my chair by just how creased it is. Let me block out for that side. If that helps. Oops, it didn't kill a plant. There we go. Um, this is my Stockholm sweater. It is a pattern by Petite Knit. And it has been on my needles since October of last year and I just finally, like the whole body was done, I just had to do the sleeves and I was like, why am I letting this sit? Let's just do it. So let me chuck this. Okay, so this is it. Um, it is a super easy wearing 
boxy um, sweater and it is super comfy, super cosy and I really really like it. I knit this up with one strand of Philco and Atelier and the colour like maybe it's called slate green? No it can't be slate green. It's a really muddy dark green colour and one strand of Mondeem sock yarn and I cast this on because I have one of these patterns. I have one of these sweaters already that I made ages ago and it is one of my most worn sweaters and I just really wanted another one. Um, the construction is quite interesting, it's like a box back and then you shape the, sh the shoulder, the shaping is on the shoulders as opposed to a lot of, oh I just realised I forgot a whip, <laughs> as opposed to a lot of um, drop shoulders which is like a trapezium, trapezoid construction. This is a square back which is quite cool. Um, I started this the weekend that I launched my Cargill pattern, so the first weekend of October last year which is when we went to uh, Belfast and Dublin for like a long weekend and I was like oh I'm gonna make a green sweater and like I say I just never finished it. Um, I have learned that the thing I love so much about my first version is the yarn combination and less the pattern. I like the pattern, it is super comfy, it's super cosy, it is so boxy and it's a little bit shapeless which I don't dislike but I realize, it made me realise that like the yarn combo is what makes me the hardest thing about the first one. It is a really lovely green. It is, it's probably, yeah, it's kind of got a fairly true to pattern. I remember thinking the whole time I was knitting this that this is the colour of my eyes and like this would be, but I don't know if that actually is. What do you reckon? <laughs> and so it would be perfect for that. Um, but I have worn it loads. It's been really nice when it's been like that medium where like you don't really want to be fancy fancy but you don't really want to be scruffy and you want to just like shove something on. This has been perfect. Um, and it is, it is so soft and so cosy. I'm wearing just a camisole underneath this and this is next to Skin Soft. And yeah, I really like it. It's a great pattern. I don't think I would rush to make a third, but I will use the yarn combination of my first one again, which was alpaca and mohair. Um, and yeah, so I'm glad I've got this. I'm glad it's off my needles after so long. Um, I still have ends somewhere to weave in, but that's fine. That's a sign of it being handmade. And yeah, I think it's just, I should show you better, shouldn't I? Oh yeah, it's just like, it's just so boxy. There is shaping in the pattern um, down the sides, but yeah. It's washing me out. That's okay. Um, so yeah, it's a Stockholm sweater by Petite Knit in Retisario Rosa Pomar Mondim and Sandra's Garn Tin, no it's not. Philco and Atelia. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think it's just a real staple. I'm glad I've got it. Um, and I'm glad it's off my needles. Okay. From one green sweater to another green sweater. Ta da! <laughs> I promise it's different. <laughs> so, um, this is also been sample knit for me by Viv, um, who's a local Edinburgh knitter. I was looking for some sample knits a while ago. Um, I wanted this sweater since I released the pattern and I just kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off and I was like you know what I'm just gonna sam have a sample knit because then I've got it and I'll stop stressing about it and like it's in existence. So this is my Dorney. Let me do some, do some showing. Oh there we go. So this is my Dorney. It is a all over cable knit sweater. I released it last January or this January. Um. It is a raglan, it's super easy, it's just like these six cable, like six stitch wide cables. It's quite fitted over the shoulders, but it's quite, it's like less fitted, like here is quite fitted. Um, but it's not like tight on my tummy or anything, which I really like. And it's in dark green, this is knit in West Yorkshire Spinners BFL fleece. And so, uh, drops more hair, drops kids up more hair. Um, when we take the photos for this, Yenny, who um, was one of the models for the Dorney, she also modelled the Cargill, um, is a local knitter comes to her knit night and um, she turned up on the day in a version knit in this yarn and I fell in love with it. I thought it was so soft and so beautiful and so drapey that I knew from that moment I wanted one in green and it was, it's literally everything I want it to be. It's like dark and cozy and I think this colour suits me quite well. I think, um, I think I thought this green would be my green, but I think this is my green. <laughs> I think there's something with like the dark hair and the, it makes me look very pale, but I don't think in a bad way necessarily. And yeah, I love it so much. Um, 
it's not had a lipstick outing yet because I want to wear it for something that I'm excited for and I don't know what that is yet. So maybe this weekend it will get its first wear. Um, the Dorney is DK or like heavy DK slash worsted with my wear. So it is a cozy sweater. So this is a perfect time of year for it. It's a really good layer underneath um, like a jacket. It keeps me really toasty. And this is my third Dorney. I've got one without my hair that I keep on the boat for sailing and that is a super good sailing sweater. I've got one that is like a caramel coffee, toffee colour and I've got this one. So I just feel like I've got all the best like classic cable knit sweaters and yeah, I, I just really love it. It made me really happy when it arrived. I met Viv in town and um, was it last Friday I think and I was like oh this is so exciting and so now it's just been like sitting in its little bag waiting for me to wear it so I need to wear it soon and um, this one fits me better than any of my samples do it's a size three so I have almost no ease across the bus I think I maybe have like one centimeter ease um and yeah Ta -da! so pleased <laughs> Um, I made a dark green sweater in Cascade 220 in the colourway Shire and it was a the Billy sweater by Sari Nordland and it was so much work. It just took it took me so long. It was like the biggest knit I'd done to date and the fit was off. The fit was really off. Um, the sleeves were, the sleeves kind of like bagged out which I could have gone back and fixed but I didn't. Um, but they weren't like, they didn't taper all the way, they kind of tapered to like here and then they were loose which always just irked me. And then the chest was done in honeycomb cables which I will always now call the boa constrictor cables. Somebody commented on YouTube and told me that and it was completely true, it just felt like it was like squeezing me and I, I hated it. Um, but the colour was so good and it looked amazing, I just hated how it fit. So I gifted that sweater and now I feel like I finally like restored restored my dark green sweater into my life that I've wanted for two years now so that feels really good to finally have it and it's nice to have another sample in my own yarn my own yarn sample in my own of my own pattern um yeah sample knitting by the way um I don't know if it's worth the sharing I think there are lots of different ways to do it but I paid sample litter by the meter of yarn and I usually just pay them the mark the one in the pattern rather than the amount they've actually used unless the amount they use is more, usually it's less. Um, and I just did some googling and found out what it was and I think 14 pence per meter is the current going rate and so that is what I pay sample knitters. Um, some dyers, like Indy dyers, will pay people in yarn and then like you sample knit it and then you get, say you use four skeins of yarn then you get four skeins worth of credit. Um, but the way I've always done it is just paying by the meter. I think I've had four things sample knit now and yeah, I, I'm i always a little bit jealous because I want to be able to knit it myself but at the same time it takes a lot of pressure off and I'm definitely kind of leaning into if I want to, I really want to keep designing I need to just like make it as easy as possible for myself and sometimes when things get a bit stressful I'm like okay how can I remove the stress and often that like that has been sample knitting sometimes so yeah I know I don't know I thought it was controversial having some people sample knit I don't think so but I want to just yeah people get paid and I get a nice garment at the end so it's always I don't know it's kind of a win-win for me um so that is my Dorney good I'm going to a thing this afternoon and part of me thinks I should wear this I was gonna wear my dafties but this just looks so cute I don't know okay I've got one more one more finished object my wardrobe has been like what's the word like heavily supplemented in the past few weeks I've got so much so many new knits to show okay here we go. So this is my, you can tell it's recently finished because I still have some ends that are not woven in. This is my most recently finished, uh, yeah that's true, most recently finished FO. I finished it um, earlier this week. It is my Leith Cardian, which is a, it's generally got intarsia, but I left off the intarsia. So it's an entirely plain sweater. It does not have buttons on it. I have the buttons, they're literally right here in this bag. I've just not shown them on yet. Um, so let me show you it. It hits like right a little bit lower than my jeans and my sleeves are like bracelet length and it is just the perfect, perfect cosy grey cardigan which is exactly what I wanted it to be and I just, yeah, I want to just like, that's what I want to do when I wear it. <laughs> 
Um, so this is this is knit up in yarn I've had in stash for ages, which is Drops in Nord, which is their sock yarn. It's a pack of wool and I think nylon or polyamide. Um, to her, together with a strand of Filcalan, no, Sandus Garn Tin Silk Mohair. I said this before, I love that yarn combination. The alpaca is really soft. Someone also told me that the alpaca um, has a different, the hairs on the alpaca are different, like staple length, and that prevents it from pilling as much. So I found that my alpaca garments also wear really well. But this mohair, which is the tin silk mohair from Sandus Garn, has got 15% wool. So it has like quite a lot of structure to it, which I really like. Yeah, um, what did I do this pattern? So I left off the intarsia on the back and I subbed in, instead of the double knitted button band, I just put in two by two rib everywhere. So there's two by two on the sleeves, two by two on the hem, and then instead of the double knit, I just did the two by two here. And I love this. I think I'll make another one at some point. Um, it is so easy to wear. And I think I'll have a look at, I think I've maybe got some navy drops yarn and I think a navy cardigan would be great as well. I think I'll get a lot of wear out of it. Um, yeah, it's just super cozy, super easy. I feel still so quite fashionable, like still quite chic in it. Um, I wore it to the office this week and I just felt really like cozy and warm but also still like presentable and yeah, it was really nice. So yeah, this is my my leaf, um, my boring leaf. But yeah, I love it. When we did the test it for this, so many of the testers were like, wow, the fit of this is, like, I love the fit of this, this cardigan. And so when I knew I wanted this, I thought, you know what, I love my leaves. I love the fit of them. Why don't I just stick with that rather than try to make, you know, go find another pattern. Um, the substitutes I wanted to make were really simple. Um, and I feel like there are a lot of 2 by 2 rib cardigans. There's the Ava, there's an Ozetta or a Kadri one right now. I feel like it's very, like, fashionable. And so it was a really, really easy modification. Um, and also nice because the double knit button band looks beautiful. It is so much work. <laughs> so I really love the fact that I could just uh, do it this way. Um, because it's bottom up. Again, I just love a bottom up drop shoulder cardigan. I don't know why, but I really do. But it means that there's technically, a, there's technically, I mean, there is. You can kind of see the seam, I guess. But it is um, grafted or kitchener together. And so it means it's like seamless, which I think makes a very, very clean shoulder detail. So those are all my finished objects. Yeah, I'm feeling very lucky right now. I've got lots of really nice things to wear, which is great. Um, let me move on to the works in progress. I feel like I'm, this just gets a little bit open for filming. So I'm gonna put on one of my high neck cardigans and I've forgotten a whip. So I'll do those two things and then we can keep. There we go. Yeah, I don't know what it is about filming, but just having so much skin, one when I can see myself in the viewfinder, just makes me feel really like naked. I would definitely wear that out with just a scoop neck. It felt fine, but anyway, I will put on Daft Days since it is Daft Days Day and it's my rainbow version. Okay, works in progress. So many things, so many things. Okay, uh, how many do I have? One, two, four, five, six. Six works in progress. So let me start with the ones that were around last time and then move into the new ones. Oh no, one more here. So tangled in my bag here. Okay, so um, just because, you know, everyone needs endless numbers of drop shoulder mohair projects. I have another one. So um, this is also a been I'm keeping this in my bag, which I was gifted forever ago by Apollonie, and I love this bag so much, and it goes so well with the project. It is probably too small for this project now, so everything is very wrinkled, uh, as you can see, but I'm just stuffing it in there every time I have to work on it. So this is my stick season sweater without the sticks. So the stick season sweater is like a textured yoke. I've left that texture off. I love the fit of that sweater and a few people talked about making it without that and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try and I wanted a pickle green sweater for a while so here's my pickle green sweater. It is so wrinkled, Rebecca, this is embarrassing, oh well. Um, so not, nothing's been blocked so it also just looks, none of the details are really popping but there's this detailed seam, this rib detailed seam around the back, shoulder, um, you really can't see that which will all open out and then it's all the way down here and then it's also 
down the side of the body. So it's like, it's got a little bit of something going on. Um, it's not just a plain drop shoulder, but not, you know, it's still for the most part, like just plain stocking it. Um, and yeah, I've got this part of the sleeve done. I went to see Napoleon in the cinema this week. Um, if anyone like is like me and is a fan, fanatic, a bit obsessive about the 2005 Pride and Prejudice movie, to be honest, I know both the 1995 BBC adaption and the 2005 movie, but they use one of the songs from 2005 PMP in Napoleon. And it was so weird to see because it's the most distinct song. It's Dawn. It's called Dawn. It's like the, the song of Pride and Prejudice. And I just thought I was playing Napoleon. And I was like, what is happening here? Um, my partner was convinced that like for most people that's not a, like not a thing but I, there are enough 2005 PMP girlies out there that we will know so that's my warning it happens if you watch the movie <laughs> um so I took it to the cinema I done like I just picked up on the short road so I got most of the sleeve net in the cinema I'd like to get the rest of the sleeve done this weekend but I'm not really like it's just plodding along I've got some other things on my needles that I'm very excited about oh. so this is getting like zero of my time um, I've also been audiobooking all week and with my audiobook I can do other knitting but I, with book reading I can only do stock in it so this hasn't had much time this week. It got a lot of time, we went to Aaron for a weekend which was amazing and I read Aaron Flame which is the new fourth wing book and I didn't expect to get through so much of this project but that I was just reading and knitting for like hours a day. So yeah, um, this is Surprise, 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 surprise. Uh, dropped alpaca and knitting for olive mohair. So this is like a true, like this is called the olive green mix, I think. And this is a bit more of an apple green. And I think we're getting kind of pickle color, like very fresh chive, herby green. Probably not quite pickle, but I'm okay with that. Uh, I'm excited, I'm excited to wear this. I'm obviously having a bit of a green phase. I've got one more green whip to show you so yeah we're really going through the greens um but yeah I'm just looking forward to this I've kind of really enjoyed recently just having some of these mohair and fingering weight sweaters and just I know I'm gonna love the end products and it's been really nice using some of my, my own patterns in a different way so using like leaf without the intarsia stick, stick season without the sticks and um, that's just been really fun so yeah we're almost there. Um, yeah, you can see the variegation up close much better. And I think this will be really nice again, very spring like, but maybe also Christmas Eve. <laughs> maybe. Um, cool. Yeah, you can see it's like just about ready to burst out of this bag, but I'm determined to keep it in here until until the end. Okay, my second what you saw last time also, I have made so little progress on this week and I need to just finish it. Uh, I am also going to be writing this pattern up this week, my plan is to write up on Saturday. I have been struggling for brain capacity recently um, and so because I have a full time job a lot of my design stuff has to happen in the, well, it happens in the evenings and weekends and a lot of the time if my brain is struggling the thing that has to go is the pattern stuff because I don't have brain, if I don't have brain space then I don't get the pattern stuff done. I'm really slouching. Um, and so there are a couple of, like I have finished the Daft Day's test knits. I now have no test knits running, which has been the first time since like June. <laughs> so I'm kind of annoyed at myself because there are only certain months of the year where you can release, really you can release winter sweaters. And so I would have been allowed to be organized enough to have one that was ready to come out in January, um, which is not gonna happen, but it's fine. It will be longer than that. So all I have to say, I finished the sleeve. I'm ready to write this up, but I didn't get the second sleeve finished. It's not been blocked, so when it's color works, so it might look a bit funky. This is my Rue sweater, spelled R H U E. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Okay, this is the motivation I needed to finish the second sleeve. Look at that. Oh wow. Oh wow. Okay, I'm a big fan now. <laughs> I don't know why it's just not been tickled. Like, it's fine, I'm just like, oh yeah, I'll finish it. Oh, look at that, now I want to wear it. Oh, wow. Okay, so, let me talk about this. This is knit up using um, 
the fiber company lore is lovely i really like this very nice yarn um and it is contiguous construction which is a new to me construction and basically it's kind of a mashup between a saddle shoulder and a raglan but you cast on and then you shape the, the saddles and then you shape down here and then not always but this one is finished off with raglan increases and um, so there's a little bit of working back and forth and then you're working in the round and what I thought was cool about that is it means that you can start I mean, you can do it with a raglan as well but you kind of get saddle shoulder but you can start with colour work because you're working in the round it's really nice easy colour work to do so the colour work continues down the sleeves and um, it's kind of mirrored so there's this middle, middle one and then one either side and then for this one uh, the bottom of both the sleeves and the body are finished in the contrast colour but you could also just do instead of doing this colour work section you could just do this V and keep the main colour all the way through, which I think would be really cool. Someone has suggested doing a different colour for each set motif. Someone suggested using a colour changing yarn. I think those are amazing. Um, I really, I mean, I'm too late for it, but I think a Christmas version would be amazing in red and white. Um, but I need to work out. I think I want to make a second one in either the new Shetland, I want to say Jameson's and Smith, but it honestly could be, it could be, just the other, the other one. <laughs> Jameson Sons, Jameson Smith. Someone brought out a new five ply, which would be, I mean, it's colour work yarn. It feels like it'd be a good sweater to make that in. I also like the idea of using Retrosaria Bruska, which has this amazing like orange colour, like burnt, properly burnt orange. They stock that at my one of my local yarn shops, so I think I will go and have a squish of it and see. But yeah, oh, I really, it fits really well. I'm really, really pleased with the fit of it. Um, that has been something that's been really fun. And oh, look at that. Okay, I need to get the sleeve finished this week. That is happening. I'm not leaving. If I can get the colour work done this weekend, I can get the sleeve finished this, this week. It looks so good. I want to wear this. Oh, imagine this like under a jacket on a nice big winter walk. So yes, I tomorrow is going to get written up. Um, so the test call will be sometime next week, I think. Um, maybe next towards next weekend. It'll be an eight-week test. I think it means it finishes. My plan is to have this launched for the first week, the first day of February. I think the first is a Friday. Um, and yeah, oh, it's so good. It's called Rue R H U E. I just shocked myself. I'm so excited. Huh. Okay, I need to get this written up and get it ready. Get it over to. I've told my tech editor it's coming, so I just need to get it finished. And then decide what colour to make my second one. I already have some people who have messaged about test setting this one, so um, that's always enthusiastic when people show their excitement, so I'm excited for that. Okay, what do I have? I've got three more whips. Okay, let's talk about this one first, because this one has been in this bag, and I don't know what to do about it, basically. So... I think I told you that, I think I said last time that I had yarn and I was going to make a lento with the care colour work and I'd seen it before and I was going to do that. And then I went on holiday and I decided I didn't want to do that and I just really wanted a colour work yoke and so I cast on a colour work yoke sweater. So we have a colour work yoke. Um, the colour the collar is a little bit too big because I just didn't use it small enough heel size. Um, I just sort of freestyle the colour work yoke. It's pretty classic, there's nothing particularly exciting about it. Um, and here's where I'm confused. So this is just my, this is where I'm, this is why I'm so stuck. So I kind of mathed it and realised I had to do, I think the gauge is around about 18 stitches per 10 centimetres. And based on that gauge, I need 300 stitches before I split for sleeves. I currently have 200 stitches on my needles. If I increase one in every three stitches, no, one in every two stitches, it puckers, extremely of course it does because i'm increasing too dramatically and then i was like well maybe the yoke is too small then like maybe that's the problem and i should have just cast on more stitches from the start but this yoke fits pretty good i am not worried about this yoke being too small um so is my, is my math wrong and the annoying thing is i have to knit, I have to knit some color some short rows so I need to commit to what I'm going to do next, basically. But I really do not think it's too small. Like, it's not even... 
you know that way where it's too short you kind of feel like your shoulders are in like tucked in like a tube it doesn't feel that way i've got plenty of space so maybe my this is also going to open up a bit when it blocks this will lie flatter so it'll be a little bit deeper so i think i need to just trust the process drop my increase rate to like one in five i was thinking and then just do like a division like a divisional split and maybe make sure to cast on quite a few stitches under, this, under the arms. It is it is just for me to wear around. I don't really mind if it's perfect. I have an idea of how this could evolve into a pattern next year but it would be very different from this so I'm kind of just keeping that in the back burner and we'll let my brain work it out as it comes but yeah I can't really work out what I've done. Like the, the maths doesn't agree with what's in front of me <laughs> Um, but I need like this would be really good just to get the yoke done and then it's just Play knitting and that'd be great for things like cinema um, and like work meetings so it'd be nice to have that done um, but I need to get there so I need to make a decision about this yoke and I can't make a decision up so yeah I think I've decided that I'm just gonna increase one in every five and then do my short rows and then split for sleeves and just make sure that it's proportionate to the sleeve split and cast on maybe like 10 stitches under the arms and hope for the best. This is not how I normally design, I should clarify. Usually there's more maths in this, but I was just like, I'm just gonna freestyle a, a yoke. And I was trying it on as I went, and I was like, oh yeah, it's definitely fitting. And then I got to here, and I was like, oh yeah, it's definitely still fitting. So I was happy with everything, and I thought, okay, let me just do some maths to work out how many stitches I need for the chest and for the arms. And then I thought, oh, I need 300 stitches. Okay, that means I have to increase every second stitch. And then it was puckering like crazy. It's just like, Pleh. so. Yeah, I don't really understand. I swear I am good at this, just apparently not with this one. So yeah, I just need to bite the bullet and thin it, finish it. I now also have, uh, you will see, repurposed this white yarn and don't have any left. So um, I've got lots and lots of the contrast colour but not very much of this. So I, I need to just decide what I'm doing so that I can finish up in the contrast colour. This is the new yarn which is Drops Daisy. And I'm holding it with drops of mohair. Um, this is I think the colour toffee and another one's white. And I got a comment last time about drops and I'm a bit, it's one of those topics I'm, I don't really know what I think about drops and so I find it hard to take a stance on which is unusual for me. I guess I'm conflicted. Drops is very affordable for, it's easily accessible for most people in Europe and I think something that I from the very start of podcasting have always been really big on is like showcasing brands and yarn, like not just showcasing like luxury fibres and making projects that you can see and be like, oh wow, like I could make that, I could afford to make that, that is within my budget. And Drops has always been really good for that. And then I kind of steered away from Drops for a while when I started designing. And I feel like recently I've had a lot of projects on my needles that have Drops on them. I've not really, I mean, I bought the Drops Daisy. I've not really bought much Drops yarn in a, quite a long time. Everything I've just had has been in stash. Um, but yeah, so I, I've always been quite pro because of that. On the other hand, Drops do publish a lot of free patterns and more than once those free patterns have been accused of like ripping off from other designers. And as a designer, I would abs I would be pretty heartbroken if they um, bought my pattern and then wrote up a free version and put it on their website. Like I would be, that would frustrate me. And so I'm really torn. I don't really know what I, I mean, I don't really know. I think that's bad practice. And so I probably should stop supporting them. But at the same time, I've really appreciated the offer an affordable alternative to so many yarns in the market that mean that you can see, oh, sorry the kid down scared is screaming, can you hear that? I hope not. Um, it does mean it's a, it's a more affordable alternative. So maybe it's a week of me to not take a stronger stance on it. Um, it will make me reconsider some drops purchases in the future. I have a design on my needles and drops though, which you will see. Um, so I don't really know. I'm curious, what are your thoughts on drops? Um, is affordability the priority or is integrity <laughs> the priority? I'm not really sure. I've never used a doll's pattern. So part of me in my head, I think I think of them as quite separate things, like the patterns are different from the yarn, but of course it's all one company. So um, that is something to bear in mind. So yeah, I'm curious. Am I a sellout for using drops? Or what do we think about it? Please let me know. Okay, I have two more works in progress. Let me just move on straight onto the one in drops first because we're still on the top of the drops. So I have become so fussy with yarn for designs. It's kind of annoying, if I'm being honest with myself, because 
I just swatch and swatch and swatch and swatch and I cannot find the thing that I want to knit the, knit the sweater in. It's been in the past two especially. Um, and then I don't want to buy more yarn because I've already got so much yarn. Like I don't want to buy a whole sweater quantity of something new just to see if it's going to work. So I swatched this eventually in the le the, the rest of the drops that I bought for the Colourwork sweater. Um, and it gave me the stitch definition I was looking for. So I've continued with this. I know that this yarn is meant to be a dupe of Sanders Garn. Double Sunday? Yeah, Double Sunday. So I think I can make the second sample on Double Sunday. I'm also going to swatch with Cascade because I think they're pretty similar yardages and I love Cascade so much. So this is, this is flown. This has been my obsession of the week. I got the Dorney back last week in the cables and I was like, oh, I want a cable in a sweater. So I cast one on. <sighs> so I just joined the round last night um, this was the bit that I had in my brain, which is this cable detail that goes down the side. Um, you can tell that ever, you'll see with the next two that the stick season shoulder detail is in my brain and I'm just running with it. Um, and then I also decided to, at oh, the front here, it's kind of hard to see, I always find with cables I find it quite tricky. Um, the cable detail runs down the front as well. I always think a drop shoulder looks like weirdly naked without its neck band and so this just feels naked and like very white to me um, but I think once I get the collar on, my plan is to get the collar on and then get it blocked and then start making some decisions. <laughs> this is all I have left of the ball I'm currently using so I just joined the round, I will finish working this up and then I will get the collar on and I am in love, I am so so in love, I'm so excited to see what this, like, this is like blocked. My vision for this is that there's going to be a cardigan, there's going to be instructions for both a cardigan version and a sweater version in the pattern and I want the cardigan in red, like Christmas red, and I want to finish it in time for Christmas. Um, but to be honest, at this rate, that's not far away. Um, and yeah, I just think it's so cute and it is just chock-a-block full of cables, like non-stop cables the whole way, but really easy, like a braid and a four stitch cable, so not hard cabling at all. Um, I also can do this all with a cable needle I find it much easier to, I don't know how to explain this, like if I've got my needles I find it easier to go through the back and then pull the stitches off when I cable without a cable needle. So mm, of all the twists, say you're doing, you do four, there's like, it's, a, it's an eight row repeat, so uh, you're crossing four times in a repeat and of those four, three of them cross the way that is easier for me to cross the cable needles and one of them is the other way. Um, I, I'm curious if that's the case for everyone who do cables without a cable needle or if that's a, a me preference. Um, you could very easily switch the, cable, the twist the other way if that was easier for you. But yeah, so it's been really fun, it's been really fast cabling without a cable needle and it's just looking so pretty and so cute and yeah we're now joined under the sleeve so yeah I think I'll probably get this finished today and get the collar picked up and I'm having to remind myself to stop working on this and to work on other things because I am just obsessed. Um, and yeah, I want to get some swatching done this weekend so that I can get a second sample and do it in something else, probably Cascade. I love Cascade, everyone loves Cascade and Cascade is an example of a great budget yarn that is readily accessible to a lot of people in a variety of colours that as far as I'm aware don't have any history of ripping off designs for people that I'm aware of, but who knows, maybe they do. <laughs> So if I can get Gage with Cascade, I think that'll be my red one. I also really want a fluffy one. And part of me is tempted to make a red fluffy version with a, like a fingering and a mohair. But I need to see what my stitch definition is like. Um, oh, that'd be so nice. So yes, to be named, but definitely in existence. Cardigan, well, currently sweater. Cardigan to be. Um, I love cables because it's like a surprise when you block them to see what they're going to open up like. This is in um, my Elizabeth Scarlet pouch. I love this one. I've got two. This one, they've stopped doing their big pouches and this is their everyday pouch. There's not a massive difference in sizes, but this one is definitely smaller. Okay, and then on to my other whip, which I've also done a lot on. Um, and I've got a funny story about this one. So this has been in my head for so long. I, yeah, I've been swatching and swatching. This one is 
the this has been an insane amount of swatching so okay let me show it first i've kind of got a back panel a power front panel it is a herringbone stitch sweater um, it's not herringbone stitch i know that's a thing it looks like herringbone but it's not herringbone sweat stitch i've started on the front the best way to see it is definitely on the back it is so airy and beautiful this is Derer Natura Ulysse and this has just been, this is so entertaining. So the gauge on the sweater is, I think, it's not been blocked fully yet, like this, the whole sweater's not been wet blocked, I've just done this watch. Um, it's about 22 stitches and 50 rows per 10 centimetres or 4, four inches on 5 millimetre needles in sport weight yarn. Like none of that, ma none of that adds up, that just doesn't make sense to me, like sport weight, Five mil needles, 22 stitches, um, and 50 rows. So it has just been so interesting. It obviously then does take a bit longer to work up because there are 50 rows per 10 centimeters. So there's a lot more like rows to be worked before you get depth. I keep that in mind when it comes to the test net for this. It's gonna have a longer test net than my usual, um, than my usual test net. Usually it's eight or nine weeks. I'll try and make it closer to 10 or 12 even. Um, just to make sure that there's plenty of time for this and yeah I'm currently just working on shaping I said something funny there currently just working on shaping up the neckline of one of the fronts and I'm so excited it is also drop shoulder uh, I oh wait I have that up inside out <laughs> there we go that is at the right right um, I kept this until now I w I have had like I say I've had this stitch pattern in my brain for so long I swatched it, I swatched it, I swatched it, I tried to find the yarn. Um, it was it was so interesting. I've done so many different swatches with this. Um, I find this is the best for stitch definition. I actually started it as a raglan. So there's not a huge amount to show, but here is like a, one of the raglan corners. Um, and I kept this on and didn't unwind it yet so that I could show it where I got to. But I thought it was interesting. I started it as a raglan and decided I didn't like it as much as a raglan. Uh, but I think the drop shoulder really like lends itself to clean lines more. So yeah, that um, this is how far I got with it uh, before deciding actually I don't want to do that. <laughs> so I would like to get this drawing around this weekend. Uh, I think it'll be much, I mean it's not particularly slow, but I think it'll be faster when it's in the round because um, then there's no purling and I, I, I knit faster than I purl. It's also got this beautiful shoulder detail and it's going to have a really interesting detail at the neck and the cuffs. I hope, um, but I need to get there first. It is so light, it weighs absolutely nothing. It is just like light as air, which is amazing. Um, and yeah, uh, I think this is called Kip, K-I-P, uh, and that is about all I have, but this is this is Kip. And uh, yeah, we'll see where this goes. I'm excited to have it like going. Unfortunately, the cables have overtaken my entire brain this week, and so it's not had as much progress as I wanted to have. Um, and I want to prioritise this one because I think it needs longer to test it, so we will see. Okay, I just have one more work in progress. And it kind of leads into Advent, Advent chat. So this is my blanket that I started last year. And I've just been working on it a little bit. So this is where we're at. Um, it is twice as long as this, so it is, it's pretty big. And let me see, so this was from a recycled advent that I bought last year and um, it was from, it's from a company called Alternate or a yarn shop called Alternate Universe and they put together a fade with recycled minis which makes it a generally pretty affordable calendar and also just fun to knit with. Um, however, the calendar arrived and there were a couple of things that just made me stop working on it. I had planned to stripe it with um, a skein of white, so hold it together with um, woolly knit, plain British wool and white, and I did that all the way, and then I found that here there were some whites in the mix which really bugged me. So that threw me off for a little bit. And then we finished with a lot of blues. So I've got, what, well, already like five blues in there, and I still have to work through another four blues. So I just like the balance of colours at the end really threw me off and I just put this away and stopped working on it. Um, but what I decided to do, and then I also decided 
oh, there were a couple of duplicates. I think I got two duplicates. And so I just felt like it wasn't gonna be big enough. Like that is the full length of it now, but it's really wide. And I wanted it to be as white, as big as possible. So my plan was to work over it over two years, get the recycled advent again this year, and then add to the blanket. All good. I accidentally ordered the recycled blanket twice. The, sorry, recycled advent twice. I thought I'd ordered it. I was pretty sure I'd ordered it. And then I could not find my order confirmation anywhere. And I sh what I should have probably done is message the, com the shop and say, hi, did I order this? Can you confirm? I didn't, I just ordered a second one. And then this week I got shipping confirmations for two. <laughs> or last week. I actually had to email them because it's not arrived and it should have arrived already. Um, so yeah, we'll see where that shows up, but I have two of them coming and I have to make a decision about what to do. So part of me feels like if I already have, if I've got two sets of advent, if I've got two advents coming, I should just use that one to make a blanket. And there's some things I would have changed. I'd have liked to do an icorn edge. I didn't do it on this one. Um, it means I could just not stripe it and I could just use the same, I could just hold it with a strand of woolly knit the whole way through. Um, or I could do this and make it bigger. So yeah, I need to decide what to do about that. I also, what I want to do is open the whole advent and then make up my mind. And still knit it every single day, but open the colours ahead of time. And also see if I get duplicate colours. I got duplicates last year, I think, yeah. So I think my current one's like 16 stripes, which is a lot smaller than the 24 that I counted for. So when they arrive, I think I'll open them. I will check to see what the colours are like, see if the two, if the two advents match and see if they, um, if I've got all the colours and then on that make a decision. But I think what I should do is just finish, finish this one off. I think I should just knit this up and finish it. I know that someone from my knit night has made a blanket, although it is dot white, which is might, might cause a problem, but they made a blanket which they donated to the homeless and it's beautiful. And I did wonder about potentially, I probably don't need two of these with the white stripes. My only issue is of course like, I don't think that this is particularly good for keeping clean. So that might be a tricky thing to do. So yeah, I'm gonna have some stripes. I need to decide what to do with this one. Any suggestions are welcome. I will finish it. It will have like four more stripes and then it'll be like this. So it's not super deep. It will most definitely probably gain a good bit of size with blocking, um, but it is it's pretty wide. It is, yeah. So yeah, currently it is like that wide, that deep. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm hoping you can. <laughs> so yeah, it's not like an insignificant size. I could just finish it off and then it's just a cozy little, like not quite lap blanket. I just start a new one. So any suggestions are very welcome. I look like um, I'm like full knit knitter core right now with my stripey, stripey everything. So yeah, um, I should try and finish this before I start my new advent. That was my plan, although I've not picked it up for a week, so. Um, and then I've got plenty of this, loads and loads of this. So I've got enough to do a second blanket. So once they arrive, I will make up my mind about the second one. And I think what I'd like to do then is, yeah, if I've got, just do the same thing again, but just use, probably like fade out one and then fade back the other color. Um, and then I'll have a big blanket that I can keep that it can be like a bed size blanket, which is this one is. And then this one could just be like a cozy extra blanket. So yes. Um, in terms of acquisitions, I just wanted to talk about a couple of things. I bought some very beautiful yarn, which was the Sheepsoft DK from Laxton's, with the goal of this being the yarn I used for my cable knit sweater. But I'm really, again, I was being so picky. The variegation in the yarn, I thought, drew away from the cable detail. And so I didn't like the swatch. But what I think I'm going to do is I've got some pure mohair, not mohair silk, just pure mohair. And I think I'm going to hold it double to make a shawl, a big shawl in grey. I thought I'd cast that on by now, but I have not. And then my other thing is... My advent calendar came. So this is from Skate and the Stitch. Um, it is non-superwash four ply. It is the Hobbit themed and it is chronological. Oh, I haven't actually, I've not even looked at the back. Hello friends, thank you for purchasing my 2023 advent inspired by the Hobbit. The unique journey combines the magic of J.R.R. Tolkien's epic with the artistry of yarn. I've also commissioned bespoke artwork by the talented Larissa Andre exclusively for this calendar. Over the 24 days, you'll unwrap a piece of Bilbo's adventure in the form of mini skeins, but there's also more. Draw a lively read along 
choose your progress thoughts and connect with fellow adventurers. So yeah, I really, really liked it. I loved the idea of it being the read along and the, I've not read The Hobbit in maybe two years now. Um, and then yeah, the colourway names like Welcome to Bag End, An Unexpected Party, Tom Burton William, The Company Rest in Rivendell, all the way up to An Unexpected Auction. So I just thought that was really, really lovely. I think I'm gonna make a daft day shawl with this and I'm gonna knit it up every day. So yeah, I've got quite a lot of my needles planned for, for December. I thought it would be worth mentioning those before the end of the episode because next episode we'll probably have them them. So yeah, wow, okay, it's been nice. Uh, I always think this, I'm like, oh, I need to record and then I start recording, I'm like, oh, that was so nice. Um, it's been really nice to chat with everyone. Um, I've got a pretty quiet weekend planned. We are gonna get on the boat on Sunday. I've got some pattern I can do tomorrow. And then the busyness starts. We've got Friendsmas and my sister's got her 21st birthday and we've got lots coming up in the next couple of weeks. So I have no pattern releases left at the end of the year though. So that is at least one thing. I am now back onto no more releases, just lots of patterns to write up. So um, that is all for me. A reminder that the Daft Day Shawl links are down below. Anything if, you know, gift a pattern, buy a pattern, or even just um, like the post or the um, Ravelry favouriting, queuing, all those things, we'll, we'll take it further. So um, yeah, anything you can do to show some support would be very much appreciated. I will update regularly on until the end of the year on how much we've raised and then the donation I'll do early January. And yeah, up to £5,000 I will be matching. Hopefully we could hit a nice big target and donate a nice bit of money. Um, that's all for me. Let me know what you thought about my projects. I feel like I, this is the problem when I don't podcast for a while. I have so much to share that it's just like, uh, and I find that I've not thought through some things until I sit down to podcast and I suddenly have the thought processes. So apologies for potentially overwhelming you with that. Um, but yeah, enjoy the last few, last week of November. Hope the weather is doing what you like and it's enjoyable. Um, if you're Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving-ing this weekend, then enjoy. We are off to get uh, our local vegan sandwich place. They've got a special called the Moist Maker. So we are off to order some Moist Maker sandwiches for lunch um, with I think like vegan turkey and vegan gravy and mm, I'm looking forward to it. And yeah, that's all for me. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.